And on that, I wanted to share a Bible verse with you today, actually a couple. Um, Paul says in Colossians 3, he says, Whatever you do, work heartily as for the Lord and not for men, knowing that from the Lord you will receive the inheritance as your reward. I think a lot of times in our culture today, we want to do something and get recognized for it. But there are so many people here that did a lot for Track for Sunday that may have not received recognition. But just know that uh, if you were doing it with a heart for the Lord, that you will receive the reward from the Lord. And that is way more than you could ever receive from people. So uh, for all those that work behind the scenes, that help, that, that pitch in where needed and do what is needed, and no one else takes notice, know that, that nothing goes unnoticed in the Lord's eyes. He sees that. Will you pray with me? Dear Father, we just thank you for this gathering. We thank you, Lord, for each and every one here. Father, we ask a special blessing on our time together, Lord, as we sing praises to you, Lord, as we as we listen to your word preached truthfully, Lord. We just ask that your spirit be here. Lord, that your spirit open the eyes and ears of our hearts and our souls and our, and our minds, Lord, that, that uh, we will just take in what, what your word says, Lord. That your spirit guides us. Father, that we just ask that uh, as we enter this summer season, Lord, that uh, that we just continue to walk in your path, Lord, that uh, as we prepare for mission trips, Lord, as we prepare for local missions and going abroad, Lord, we just ask for your will to be done. Lord, help us as, uh, as your servants, Lord, to just, to just go out, Lord, and share your love, to share your gospel with our community. Lord, we just ask for the strength to be able to do that. Lord, I pray a special blessing on this church. Lord, that you, you give us the courage and the wisdom and the strength Lord, to be lights in this dark world, Lord, to share your good news with everyone around us. And I ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen. At this time, I'm going to stand and greet someone who's around you this morning.
may be seated. This time we'd like the ushers to come forward as we take the morning tithes and offerings. And uh, this morning for offertory, uh, Ms. Mara Troutman will be singing for us today. Reverend Father, thank you for another Sabbath day to come into your house and worship you more. Thank you for giving us another day. Lord, just uh, ask a special blessing over this offering. May you bless the gift and the giver in your precious name. Amen. So, before I sing, um, I actually wrote this song. Um, and I wrote it about a time when um, it was right after high school uh, and all of my friends had gone off to college and I was taking a year off and none of them talked to me anymore. <laughs> Which, you know, sucks, but it happens. So um, this was at a point where I was kind of sad about it and I didn't know how I was going to uh, stay motivated, I guess. So, um, yeah, it's called California Long Distance. I have no motivation, but I gotta get it out of this broken town. When you're my medication, you're so loud because you wanna get it out. I say, California calling me. I see so much of it on TV. I'm trying hard to stay alive. But without you, I might not survive. I'm leaving in a rush It'll be hard, I know But I've got to go Don't let it come between us I can't slow my road You know I love you so So now I say California feels so free it's so nice to just be me. I'm still trying to stay alive. And without you, I might not survive. It don't take much to ruin my trust. Tried so hard, you betrayed me, you left me scarred. It don't take much to ruin my trust. I tried so hard, you betrayed me, you left me scarred.
passed away this past week, right after she gave birth to her baby on the complications, and she never even got the whole Look up her husband, her son, and It's in April? April, she was here. Okay. Yes, Heather. Remember Heather and her shoulder? Yes, Faith. Uh, the Tim Zag family. Anybody? Yes, Tracy. So remember Tracy and her kids? Yes, Pam. I want to that song. That was awesome. Yes, Mark. Um, the Chris Elmore family. He's a former co-worker of mine. Okay, Chris Elmore family. Yes. Can I have a praise of my mom? I think it would be here today. Yes. Yes. I thank praise too that we have a graduate now and blessings that um, <coughs> continues to the God leader. Okay. So be part of the Anybody else just have an unspoken request this morning? Just want to lift those up and, and, and just uh, pray. We're going to pray and then we're going to have uh, Michelle and anybody else that would like to be anointed this morning to come at this time. Father, we thank you because you are a good God. And Father God, we are just, uh, we're grateful for the things that you have given us. Lord, we thank you for things like a Tractor Sunday and for Amara and the talent that you have blessed her with and the songwriting ability. And, and, and Father, we thank you for uh, T being here today and for graduates. Uh, and, and, and Lord, we are just uh, so thankful to see what you are doing. But Lord, there are, are so many here who are, who are hurting and, and who have lost loved ones. We think of, of the April uh, Sheets uh, family as she passed away and uh, during childbirth, Lord, we just lift them up to you. Lord, we think of the Kemmer family that lost a home and, and part of a business, and, and Lord, we lift them up, and Lord, I ask you to be with uh, Donna as she recovers from her, her injuries, and uh, uh, Lord, we just uh, pray for Natalie, and Lord, I ask you to uh, just be with her and protect her, and 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 um, just to uh, be near to her as, as she goes through uh, this these coming weeks. Lord, we we uh, uh, also think of the Fricko family, and Lord, lift up uh, Tate, and and Lord for for Max this morning. Lord, we are just praying for uh, you to to touch him, and Lord, uh, have your presence on him, and and Lord, bring peace to the family, and Lord, um, we thank you for. For those in our in our congregation with a medical background and 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 Lord the abilities that you have given them and and Father God we just uh, also lift up Chloe and, and Donovan's friends and, and and Lord the president and Lord we ask that you would uh, um, have him make wise and moral uh, decisions Father God Lord we pray for uh, this Chelsea uh, that broke her thumb uh, and Margaret Lord. Uh, we, we seems like Margaret's always fighting something, and Lord, we just pray a, a cleansing over her house and, and her herself, and, and Lord, that the Chelsea, that you would uh, just uh, uh, help her thumb to heal correctly, Lord. We, we also think of Heather this morning, and we lift up her shoulder, and, and Father God, we pray that you would uh, bring uh, relief, Lord. We also think of the Chris Elmore and Tim Zanuck uh, family, and and Lord, we lift them up and ask for your peace to fall on, on them. And, and Lord, for to be with Tracy and her kids. And, and, and Father, provide them protection and, and, and guidance and, and strength. And, and Father God, we just, uh, we just uh, come to you with all of our, our requests. And, and Lord, those that weren't mentioned here today, Lord, we leave them in your hands. And, and Father, we just thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. All right, at this time, the kids are dismissed for Children's Church. Anybody else that would like to be anointed this morning are welcome to come in.
cases where I know no more trouble was Father Don, but Lord, we, we claim that you have the power over this thyroid to, to set it right, to set it in place, to make it perform its right function, Lord. Lord, we are praying for your hand to come upon her, Lord, and to change what is going on in her body. Father God, we just thank you and praise you for what you're going to do. And Lord, we just are asking all of this. Stop you with, Father God, that you would have the 
turn around and Lord, they didn't have to retreat in the presence of Jesus Christ. And Father God, we don't know what's going on. Lord, we don't even know a, the name of a, a disease, a name of a condition. Lord, uh, and, uh, but Lord, we say no more. Yeah. And in Jesus' name, we are lifting her up and asking for her. You were even touched upon the water. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. swimming. It's too cold to swim. It's not, it, it doesn't even seem like it's swimming time yet, but uh, I can't blame them. They got it on us because when I was their age, I spent the majority of my summer days at the Alcoa Pool. You remember the Alcoa Pool? Anybody else were, were pool bums there? Okay. So I'm not the only one, but uh, when, when I was born, Mom was a lifeguard there and uh, continued to work there. And later on during my teenage years, she became, uh, uh, the, she ran the park up there and, and was in charge of the pool. And, and so, but in the break between those two times during the summer, we begged her every day to take us to the pool. We begged her every day. And, and, and because it would just get so hot that you couldn't take it anymore. And, and we, we don't get those days too often anymore because we have air conditioning in, in where we live and air conditioning in the buildings we visit and, and, and we have fans and we have a ways to escape the heat and some of us might even have a, our own personal pool. But man, I can remember those days just laying around saying, I got to get to the swimming pool today. And that love of being at the pool led to me working one, one year at the, the Alcoba Park as a lifeguard. And I and watched almost a decade run of me being a lifeguard, being a waterfront supervisor, being a lifeguard instructor for the Red Cross. But there were many reasons we loved going to the pool. We had friends that we knew were going to be there, and it was long before the days of cell phones. So if you wanted to uh, talk to your friends that you hadn't seen since, since school let out, you had to go to the pool. That's where they were all going to be. And, but the main reason for going was just an escape from the summer heat. I mean, it, when you, you spent all day making hay and they were having a night swim, that was like the best thing ever that could possibly happen. But, and, and it was hard to be sad when you got to visit the pool in the dead of summer. You know, over the years we visited less and less and, and we knew people who got a pool and we would go to their house and swim and, and eventually we got our own as well. And, and, and then I became old enough that you know, they, I was trusted to travel to the creek and we would go there with friends and, and swim in the creek. And, 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 but I'll never forget the feeling of cooling off in the waters of the pool and it being exactly what I needed in that moment and that time. It was almost it was almost getting to experience heaven in that moment. You know, I want to rewind the clock just a few thousand years. It's not the Alcoa pool that we're going to be focused on, but it's the pool of Bethesda. And I don't know much about this pool. It might have been a pool that they used to cool off in their day. It might have just been a, a, a pool that was around for a, a decoration or a showpiece. But the people of this place believe that the pool was a special place as well. And they believe that this particular body of water had healing properties that could go and heal your body and heal your spirit. It was, said, it was said that the, that an angel from heaven would reach down and would touch the waters of this pool and would stir them. 
And if you were the first person to enter into the water after they were stirred from heaven, then you got to find your healing. Because of this legend, people who were ill or lame or blind or diseased would spend hours upon hours beside the pool hoping to see just a little bit of a ripple and hoping they would be the first in the pool to find their miracle. One of these people was an invalid who couldn't even get himself into the water when it was stirred. He couldn't even move that much. But he was still looking for his miracle from this body of water. And, and so, if you have your Bible, I want you to turn with me to John chapter 5. We're still continuing on looking at this miraculous Messiah. John chapter 5, verses 1 through 9. And we're going to take a look at the miracle of the pool of Bethesda. And it says this. Sometime later, Jesus went up to Jerusalem for one of the Jewish festivals. Now there was in Jerusalem near the Sheep Gate a pool, which in Aramaic is called Bethesda, and which is surrounded by five covered colonnades. Here a great number of disabled people used to lie, the blind, the lame, and the paralyzed. One who was there had been an invalid for 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and learned that he had been in this condition for a long time, he asked him, Do you want to get well? Sir, the invalid replied, I have no one to help me into the pool when the water is stirred. While I'm trying to get in, someone else goes down ahead of me. Then Jesus said to him, Get up, pick up your mat, and walk. And at once the man was cured, he picked up his mat and walked. The day on which this took place was the Sabbath. You see, this man needed a miracle. And he thought he had to find it by going to a certain place and following a certain set of rules and, and, and doing something special. But in the end, he found out that a miracle could be found just by going to Jesus. Before we take a closer look into this scripture, let's ask the, the Lord to bless our time. Alan, would you open us with a word of prayer? Dear Lord, thank you for your healing powers. Thank you for watching out for us, our friends, and our family. Thank you for being with us as we walk amongst so many that need your uh, your touch. Uh, bless Doug's words. Let them be an inspiration to us. Amen. So the first thing that I see from this scripture is that we need to make Jesus our hope. We need to make Jesus our hope. You know, there was a man that approached a Little League baseball game one afternoon and, and he talked to a boy in the dugout and he asked him, he said, what, what's the score? And the boy responded, it's 18 to nothing, we're behind. Boy, the guy said, I bet you're starting to get discouraged. And the little boy says, why should I be discouraged? We haven't even got, got off the bat yet. <laughs> you know, when you get to be grown up, life has its way of taking away your hope and optimism, doesn't it? Life has its way of, of just wearing on us and, and taking away all of our reason to be positive despite the odds. You know, most of the time when all of this stuff comes in and weighs in on us, we become discouraged and we have a lack of hope. Case in point, in my own life, last week I woke up on Tractor Sunday, and, and some of you have heard this story already, but it was 3 in the morning and I had to, to get up and use the restroom. And, and so I went and, and I just couldn't resist the urge as I came back to bed. I, I picked up my phone and I checked the weather report. And at 3 o'clock in the morning of Tractor Sunday morning, it said it rained from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m., 100% chance from 10 to 12. And it wasn't just a little bit of rain, it was severe thunderstorms that they were calling for. And so, after looking at this news, I became discouraged. 
I could not fall back asleep. I, I, I wrestled around in bed for about 20 minutes and I just couldn't fall back asleep. And so I did the only thing that I knew that I could do. I prayed. And so from about 3.30 in the morning until about 5 o'clock when I was supposed to get up, I sat there in bed and I got up and, and, and sat in the living room for a while and I prayed and about every 15 minutes I checked the weather report to see if anything had changed. <laughs> Not much. And then at about 5 o'clock I checked the weather again and, and, it, and I looked and that front edge of that, that front was starting to disperse a little bit and so... Okay, well, at least we should be able to, to get in, get our church service in, and we might have to leave it, at, you know, after everybody has some, or, you know, right around lunchtime or, or whatever. But we'll, we'll go over and, and, and we will we'll, we'll carry on. But God had something else in mind, completely. I got to church a little after 5.30, and, and, and I started to prepare for the day. Because I had to trust that God was going to do this, or else we'd look pretty foolish not being ready for the 700 people that showed up last weekend. I had to put my hope in God and not in a weather forecast, and I trusted the signs that I saw from the night before. As we traveled home from the wedding that we were performing in Mercer, two times God showed us a rainbow. And it was like I was praying, and it was God, God's all, what did I tell you already? Rainbow. What did I tell you? Rainbow. It's, it's the promise that God is not going to destroy through rain. Was I going to believe His Word? That gave me the hope to continue to carry on to get ready when the weather forecast said I should stay in bed and go to sleep. In our scripture, we see another person who finds hope when they look to Jesus. For years, this man has, has laid at the pool of Bethesda. We don't know how many years he's been coming here to find his healing, but we know that he has been afflicted for 38 years. 38 years is a long time to be afflicted with something. That, that, that pain, that, that torment wearing on you every day. Most people would have just given up hope completely. This person still had not. Let's look again at our scripture. It says, Sometime later Jesus went up to Jerusalem for one of the Jewish festivals. Now there is in Jerusalem near the Sheep Gate a pool which in Aramaic is called Bethesda, and which is surrounded by five colored colonnades. Covered colonnades. Here a great number of disabled people used to lie, the blind, the lame, the paralyzed, and one who was there had been an invalid for 38 years. You know, because of the stories of this place and the legend of this place, this man held on to hope. He had heard that this pool had healing powers when the water was stirred. He may have even seen it a time or two with his own eyes. He saw someone get into the pool and find their healing. There was enough evidence that he kept coming day in and day out, even though he couldn't find the strength in himself to roll himself into the swimming pool. Can you imagine the many times the water was stirred and not even being able to move yourself from the side of the pool, maybe the six inches that was required to find your miracle. But every time he kept thinking, maybe this time... I'll find the strength to get in. But then Jesus enters the scene. Jesus doesn't make this man go to a specific place at a specific time. Instead, all Jesus says is, do you want to be healed? When the man says that he does, he is healed completely and immediately, and in fact, so much that he stands up, he grabs his map, and he walks away. Jesus, in this instance, proves he is the one who brings hope. Amen. And he is the one that we should put our hope in. Not in a story, not in a legend, not in medicine, not in a weather forecast. 
Jesus is the one we need to put our hope in. Because His touch is all that we need when we're sick, when we're ill, when we're afflicted, or even when we feel paralyzed or are paralyzed. Jesus proves this by ending 38 years of paralysis in, in this man in an instance. Jesus is our hope. Amen. Yes. The second thing that I, need, that I see from this scripture is that Jesus is our help. Jesus is our help. How many of you love it when someone helps you? When, when someone comes and helps you? When you have, I showed up at Tractor Sunday at 5.30 in the morning and I knew I had help right away. You know why? Because Tuff's truck was sitting in the parking lot and he was downstairs getting the baked beans ready at 5.30 in the morning. I know that Brian had been awake for the last 14 hours tending the pork uh, that we were eating and, and Tuff had been doing the same thing and they had made sure for the, the, the 14 hours prior that we were going to have perfect pork shoulders there for dinner. I'm glad to see Michelle here this morning because I was afraid she was still somewhere in the corner of the church making potato salad. Uh, and no one had told her to stop yet. But as I sat there in the morning and, and was thinking about the enormity of the day ahead and it was kind of it was frustrating at the, at the very beginning. It was like, do I start here? Do I start here? Do I do this? Do I do that? And then Brent and Barry and Scott and Sam and Ray Sr. and Kevin and Tom and Sean and Andrew, they started rolling in and started filling into the places. And then we had a kitchen crew that had been here, Michelle and Taylor and Aaron and Margaret, prepping the day before. And John and Sean and Kim showed up to get the stage ready for the musical equipment. And Ann and Andy and Ed and Elias and Aaron were here to park the cars that were flowing from everywhere all at an instant. People pitched in all through the day to serve food, to carry trash, to cook hot dogs. I heard you were dumping hot dogs 50 at a time off of that grill and into the, into the, the basket. 50 hot dogs at a time and they were gone in like three minutes. But why do I tell you all of this? And if I missed anybody, and I know I did because there were, there were three pages of volunteers that were signed up to help. But each one, each person brought with them a burden of the load that is Tractor Sunday and came alongside the church and myself in order to accomplish the goal. It's not possible without help. One person cannot do what Tractor Sunday requires. Three people can't do it. Ten people can't do it. But when the load is shared, when there are helpers, you're capable of so much. Now I want you to put yourself in the place of the person laying beside the pole. Now he had someone who at least cared enough about him to bring him to the pool each day. But he had no one to help him get in the water when it was stirred. Take a listen to the scripture again. It says in verse 6, When Jesus saw him lying there and learned that he had been in this condition for a long time, he asked him, Do you want to get well? Sir, the invalid replied, I have no one to help me into the pool when the water is stirred. While I am trying to get in, someone else goes down ahead of me. See, this man, his family had all deserted him. His friends, they weren't there to help him. This man was in a lonely place. And I began to think to myself, maybe the only reason people brought him to the pool was to get rid of him for the day. Because then they didn't have to take care of him and didn't have to wait on him. So we'll just take him to the pool and get rid of him. And then we'll go back and get him at night. What a lonely state to be in. How many of you have found yourself in a similar place? When you needed people the most, it was then that people seemed to desert you. When you found yourself in a place of trouble or turmoil, even every one of your friends left your side. Where do you turn to when you have no help? The answer is Jesus is always your helper. And He has sent the Holy Spirit to be our helper while He is at the right hand of the Father. He is all of the help that you need and more. Psalm 46.1 says this, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help 
in times of trouble. Jesus came to earth as God in the flesh and He came to be our helper and our advocate. And when everyone else lets you down, Jesus will never let you down. When everyone else leaves your side, Jesus is still right there waiting for you to turn to Him. He is our refuge and our very present help in times of trouble. And when this man needed a helper, when he needed that nudge, he found the best one in Jesus Christ. So Jesus is our helper. But Jesus is also our cure. Let's look back at Scripture. It says, Then Jesus said to him, Get up, pick up your mat, and walk. And at once the man was cured. He picked up his mat and walked. The day in which this took place was the Sabbath. If you watch any amount of TV, you've probably seen all those advertisements for drugs and prescriptions and the list of side effects that's like 14 times longer than what the drug is supposed to cure you of. You know, it seems like they give you a treatment for the symptoms that gives you three more symptoms. Or that, that, you know, I, I, I kind of want a cure without uncontrollable nosebleeds and dizziness. Can I just have something that will not cause that? You know, even psychologists, when, when, you know, when, and psychiatrists, when you go to meet with them, you have to meet with them until the end of your life, right? Yes. I'll see you next week. And there's always a next week. They never can seem to, to offer you a cure. You always have to keep going back and going back. And you know that anything that's labeled as a cure-all tends to elicit skepticism based on, on, on the track record, record of the things. It seems that finding a cure in this life is very elusive. Let me tell you that Jesus never offers us temporary relief. Jesus never looks at us and says, okay, I'll trade you relief from this for three other things. You can have, Heather, your shoulder can be better, but you're going to have bathroom troubles for later for all the rest of the, the, the day today. Jesus doesn't do that. Jesus is the cure that we are looking for and that the world needs. Jesus can make the lame walk and the blind see. He can make the weather obey His every word. He can tell diseases and conditions to take a hike, and they have to listen to Him. And Jesus' curing ability started on the cross. You know that Jesus went there to save you of the disease of your own sin. You all have the disease. Some of us hide it better than others. But sin affects us all just the same. And it's a heavy tool that we have to pay. Romans 6.23 tells us the wages of sin of death is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Did you see that? The gift of God is eternal life, living forever in paradise with, with God for all time. That's the cure that Jesus brought to this world. He can take away our sin. He can take away our affliction. He can change us from heading to death to heading to eternal life. Jesus Christ is the cure this world needs. Let me just say, we have to stop fighting with each other over every little thing. People don't need your opinion. They need Jesus. You winning an argument won't cure the world, but you giving Jesus to someone else just might cure their world. This past week I went past a church sign that said, all I need is a little bit of coffee and a whole lot of Jesus. Nope. I love coffee. But all I need is Jesus. Period. Period. If I need Jesus and something else, I'm doing it wrong. All I need is Jesus. Because He is the hope when all seems lost. He is the helper to anyone that turns to Him. And He is the cure from all that ails us. 
including our sin, that carries a death sentence. You don't need Jesus and coffee or Jesus and wine or Jesus and a, and a nine holes on the golf course or Jesus and a shopping trip. You just need Jesus. Do you know Him? Is He your hope, your helper, and your cure? Would you pray with me? Lord, we thank You for Your Word. Lord, we pray that as it's been preached out today that it would not return void, but Lord, that Your Holy Spirit would stir it in our hearts and in our minds. And Lord, that it would make a lasting indentation. It would lead to us trusting in You to be our hope, to be our help, to cure us of what ails us, Lord. And, and Father God, if there's anyone here who doesn't know You, that has never accepted the fact that You have taken away our sin through Your death on the cross, Lord, I pray that they would make that commitment today. Father, In our lives, may it be true when we say that all we need is Jesus. We just thank you and praise you for who he is and for the cures that he brings. And it's in his name that we pray. Amen. Would you stand with us? This might be a new song to you, but it's uh, one that's been, been speaking to me personally. And uh, if anyone would like to just have, some, have be prayed over to find their, their cure, to find what they need in this life, then you can come as we sing. A worthy of every song we could ever sing. Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring. We live for you. Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one that could ever save. Worthy of every breath we could ever we live for you, oh, we live for you, and holy, there is no one like you, there is none beside you, open up my eyes in wonder, show me who you are and fill me with your heart.
Jesus' name.